And so I thought I would start just by telling you a little bit about, um, I don't know, the career path. They wanted us to talk about a career path that brought us here. Well, I will tell you, I had no plan to be here. Uh, it never crossed my mind in a million years that I would be a politician one day. Um, that was not, not, I just hadn't thought of it. Um, and in fact, uh, I ended up going to university quite late. I feel like I've gone to school my whole life. Any job I ever went into, I took every possible course that was available to move forward in that area. So I actually started working right next door to here at what used to be the Holiday Inn downtown. And I was an assistant um, to the uh, general manager there. And uh, I took all the courses I could think of that attached to that. Uh, and then I ended up working for a major real estate developer um, in uh, North America, and I ended up uh, taking a whole bunch of courses connected to that, and I became a certified property manager for corporate real estate and, um, and the corporate asset manager for North America um, by the time I was 26. And then I decided that it would really be fun to kind of just, you know, give that all up and, and become an actor. So I, I went into theater and I joined a theater company and I wrote some plays and I did some acting and then I, I discovered that starving was not really that much fun. And uh, so I thought, you know, I, I don't know, I like eating, I like to have a place, I like to have travel, um, probably not going to get famous. Um, so I, I totally changed careers and I ended up working for a number of years um, with youth. So I worked with uh, sexually aggressive youth in a treatment program. Um, and I took every possible thing I could take in that field uh, that would um, expand my knowledge that I needed for them. You, it wasn't like you could go to school to work with sexually aggressive youth particularly. There was no sort of school for that. You learned on the job. You learned by going to conferences and um, that sort of thing and, and by reading all the material out there. There's a lot more material in the United States on that topic and so I did a lot of work with that and I loved it. And working with those teenage boys who had some very serious behavior problems is one of the most useful things that I found in my current job in question period. I don't know if you've ever seen question period at the ledge, but working with behavioral teenagers yeah, was really useful and helpful. Because, um, uh, well, if you haven't seen question period, you need to come down to the ledge and see it. Uh, so I was very prepared for that uh, when I came down because of that work. And I spent a long time doing that. Uh, and I went to Red River during that time, and I went to the U of M, I got a degree. Um, so I've been to, I think, almost every educational outlet that we have in the city. Um, and in 2007, I was sort of sitting around thinking, what can I use all these different things for? I like to, I like to speak. Uh, I was a trainer as well. I trained um, uh, um, a number of different things with youth care workers, and I trained a respect ed program called uh, Healthy Relationships uh, for Teenagers. And it's a great program. If you ever get a chance to take it, it's, it's really fun. It's all done through activities. It's not done by people like me standing at the front of a room talking to you. Uh, and its goal is to end domestic violence by working with kids early on so people understand how to have healthy relationships. So um, I like to speak. Um, I like to train. Uh, I like to learn. I like to act. Uh, and I liked people, and I really wanted the opportunity to be at the table, you know? Like, I wanted a chance to be where I could have some feeling like I was influencing policy, or at least I had a shot at it, right? At least you're at the table. Um, I wanted to see things change, and I think that people who go into politics, bad name that many of us seem to have, the reality is that most people go into this field because they care and they want to see things 
get better, by and large. Um, and they want, they want to do whatever they can to see that happen. And it is a field where you have that opportunity to do that. So in 2007, I went to see my MLA at the time, who was Doug Martindale. Uh, he ended up being in office for 21 years. So that's kind of a long time. Uh, and I went to see him and his wife. He went to my church, and he also happened to be a minister. So I said, you know, I wanted to see him about, you know, career and that sort of thing. And, and so I told him I wanted to be a politician. And he said, oh, my goodness. He called his wife into the room, and he said, Melanie wants to be a politician. I thought she wanted to be a United Church minister. Carol said, what, is she crazy? She wants to be a politician. What's wrong with her? So um, they were pretty surprised. But uh, I then joined uh, Doug Martindale's executive. Every MLA has an executive, and the, the executive helps them, um, you know, work on everything that you need to work on in your uh, constituency. And those people are volunteers. So coming later, I guess, is one of the things, if you're interested in, in politics, that's a great way to get started, is, is to be volunteering in some capacity with politicians who are at work. Um, so I joined that in 2007, and uh, in 2011, Doug Martindale decided to retire, and I ran in his place. You have to get the nomination first. Uh, so um, that means the people in your area have to, who are members of your party come out, and they vote. Um, for you, and that's how you get the nomination. And so I won the, nom the nomination and became, and then you have to go and you, you get interviewed by the party that you happen to be um, running for, and uh, then you can become the candidate. So that's what I did. And uh, so in 2011, I was not in a target riding. There's some writings that are target, more resources, of course, go into those because they're more likely to, you know, possibly switch to the, to the other side. Uh, I was not in one of those, and so I was pretty much on my own. So I knocked on 7,000 doors, um, pretty much by myself, uh, in the North End, and, uh, which is where I live. I live on Stella, which is between Flora and Dufferin. It's the real North End. So when I would knock on their doors, people would say, are you alone? Yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, and they would say, my goodness, you're so brave. I thought, well, I'm not really brave. Like, I live here. <laughs> I live in much, a much, you know, more challenging area. Um, but it was different. So it, it's really different to knock on 7,000 doors of people you don't know. Um, you never know what's going to behind, be behind that door, who that person is, uh, what they're, you know, what they believe in, whether they're going to be, you know, friendly or not friendly. Um, I went to one door and a woman said to me that she trusted no one because her neighbors were, you know, out to get her and um, causing her harm. And, uh, and then she said to me, would you like to come into my basement? And I said, uh, okay, sure. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think I've watched maybe too many TV shows because I was definitely wondering what the heck's in that basement, right? She said, I have something I want to show you. I thought, okay. Um, and we went into the basement and I was kind of, you know, keeping an eye out behind me just in case. Um, and uh, she showed me rows and rows and rows of beautiful, tiny little clothes that she had made to send to Ukraine. She, she made all these gorgeous, embroidered little children's clothes and, and shipped them off, and that's what was down in her basement. But let me tell you, that was not what I was expecting. So um, it was absolutely, you have to be wanting to connect with people to be in this job. <laughs> it, it really doesn't work if you don't love people. Um, and so I think that's absolutely key. When it comes to things like daily routines, there are, generally speaking, unless you're sitting in the House, sitting in session in the legislature, really no routines. Um, every day is difficult, and uh, not difficult, different. And uh, 
I happen to be someone who loves change. Uh, so if you don't, again, it's maybe not the profession for you. Um, you need to love things to change every minute. Uh, so if you plan that you're going to be at a meeting tomorrow, there's all likelihood it will be canceled and something else will be in its place. Uh, you might be up here speaking. You do a lot of, of speaking in this job, so uh, you have to like to speak, I think, uh, or learn to. You can certainly learn to. And speak at a moment's notice on kind of any topic. So when we're sitting in the house, um, we might be... Uh, we might come in, it might be an opposition bill that's coming up in the house that day. Uh, we've never seen it before. Uh, and they give you some notes and you get up and speak for 10 minutes on that topic. Uh, so it's kind of like, you know those contests where they have, they have a public speaking contest? I was in one when I was a kid and then they, they give you, you know, like two minutes at the end and it's a surprise what the topic is. It's kind of like that all the time. Um, so that, I find, I find that really fun so, uh, and challenging. So um, it, it's like being in school every day, um, but a really fun school. The way education, I think, should be everywhere. Because uh, it should be fun and engaging and uh, make all of your you know, mind expand. Expand in a good way. We don't want the drugs that make your mind expand. Because <laughs> education can make your ma mind expand in a much more fun way. Um, so they ask about specific education and, and experience that brought me here. And kind of like you heard in my, as I was speaking, um, it wasn't like I planned to be in this career. So, but I do think, and, and that is one of the things I think about politics, is that people come from all over, and that's what you want. You want people in there from every possible profession because you need to speak to so many things, and you need in government, for example, in the provincial government, right? We have education, we have healthcare, we have child and family services, we have housing, we have the environment, um, we have children and youth opportunities, we have local government, we have uh, the city of Winnipeg government. Um, so. There's just sort of an endless array of subjects uh, that are of use and of value. So the more knowledge you have in the more different areas, uh, the better off you are. Uh, and a little bit of theater doesn't hurt. Uh, if you've ever heard some of the really good speakers in the house, like Teresa Oswald and Steve Ashton and... Um, Jennifer Howard and, you know, some of the really great speakers. I, I think they have some, you know, they have some definite in theater in them. Uh, and that, that's helpful when you're doing that sort of thing because you want to connect with people and engage. It's kind of like doing this, like it's re I feel like it's really hard to connect because you guys seem so far away and I, I can't kind of get down there and get closer to you. And uh, I'd much be, rather be doing something at Rumors Comedy Club, as I mentioned to somebody, where, you know, you can kind of rope them in. Um, but you seem so far away, I can hardly see you, so <laughs> it's a little bit harder. Um, so I do think when it comes to this job, and this is just general politician, so there's lots of places you can start. You can, you know, be a school trustee, you can be a city councillor, you can want, run in the province, you can run uh, in... Um, Unions often have positions that, you know, uh, advance you in politics. Um, federal government, of course, is another place where you can be. Um, and when it comes to running in a situation that has a party connected, city council does not, right? You're just running on your own to become that person. To become that city councillor, you can be any party. But when you're running for the provincial government, for example, like myself, you need to know and really figure out before you become a candidate, should you desire to become one, before you try, that you are picking a party that has all of the things that you believe in. Because you're gonna have to stand up all the time and speak to those policies and defend those policies. And it is absolutely essential if you're speaking from the heart on something, 
that you're speaking to things you believe in. So you can't just go, well, you know what? Uh, the NDP always wins in this area. I'll run for them. I'm really a conservative, but I'm going to run for the NDP. Or I'm a conservative, um, so I'm going to run, you know, I'm, I'm an NDP person, but I'm going to run for the conservatives. You will be in pain, in my opinion, if you do that. Because everything within you is the opposite of what, the, of what you're speaking to. So I really encourage you to, to look inside of yourself and to study what you believe in and what you want to be and what, you want, what kind of change you want to bring to your world. Because I know this is something people say all the time when they're speaking to youth. You are the future. You're the future. You're the now uh, as well. Um, and, and it's up to you to, to figure out what really matters and um, to know what you truly believe in. And I, I think I was only supposed to speak 20 minutes. Have I gone over those 20 minutes? I might have, eh? Okay, okay, great. Um, excellent. Um, so one of the things was, well, how often do you work in this job? Like, do you just work, you know, nine to five, Monday to Friday kind of thing? No. Uh, in my opinion, if you're a good MLA, you work all the time. Some people think we only work in session, but no, we don't. We work weekends, we work evenings, we are out at our doors finding out what people's issues and concerns are. Um, you do a lot of reading all the time. Uh, you should, uh, because there's all kinds of things you need to learn about. Uh, you get the opportunity to be in, bring in legislation. And uh, I know we're not supposed to we're not supposed to like promote our organization so but I'm going to promote a bill uh, because last session uh, bill 18 came in and I really encourage you to look it up it affects you it's about bullying in schools and the woman behind it Nancy Allen is absolutely um, a role model for me I think she's incredible uh, her and her department fought really, really hard to bring in that legislation, and it will make um, a tremendous change in human rights over time. So you do get that opportunity uh, to be behind something like that.